Hey, this is Matt. Once again, what about to end the video? This is another paid request, and it's a redo of a review uh, for Nate. Godzilla vs. Gaidan, because I was trying to do the review before, and I was forgetting certain things, and it went on for too long, like 26 minutes, so I figured, eh, let me redo that. But this is a paid request. Thank you so much for that, Nate. And for those interested in requesting pretty much any type of videos, topics, reactions, reviews, commentaries, whatever it may be, Feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. Now, like I said, this is for Godzilla vs. Gaidan. And I know he mentioned this is one of his favorites. This is one of the funniest ones. I can't say I agree. I mean, here's the thing with Godzilla and me. Growing up, I only saw a couple as a kid Godzilla vs. Megalone. Godzilla versus uh, Godzilla versus Megalon, Son of Godzilla, the Monster Zero One, and I think Godzilla's Revenge. <laughs> That's the one with the little kid befriending Son of Godzilla. So about four or five of them, and for the most part, I liked them for what they were. And at the time, they were you know, meant to be kids' films. <laughs> give or take now as years come and go I again was not too knowledgeable on Godzilla that's one of the many reasons why I like the 1998 Godzilla film I still do yes it should have been called something else like Reptilian or some other generic title I can understand Godzilla fans not liking it because it's not exactly Godzilla at all but I still think it's a very fun entertaining blockbuster movie I still have more fun with that than the actual Godzilla films later on with Aaron Taylor Johnson and Millie Bobby Brown's prune face. I still have a lot of fun with Godzilla 1998. My favorite is probably GMK because I like that that film felt like an undead Godzilla. Like it felt like a horror movie at times. Boom, doo, doo, doo. Bow, doo, doo, doo. But this is a time when, in the 60s, you had some of the films I do enjoy quite a bit, like Monster Zero, like Son of Godzilla. I like Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster, which I think is called like Ibera, Ibera, Terror of the Deep, or Horror of the Deep, or something. But it was in the U.S. as Godzilla vs. the Sea Monster. But yeah, I do enjoy that one. I do enjoy Son of Godzilla, Monster Zero. And then, yeah, the, yeah, Godzilla's Revenge, that was like 1969 or so, give or take. That was pretty bad. That's definitely one of the worst ones. And then again, the 70s, I like the 70s era for the most part, because I like Terror Mecha Godzilla. I love Godzilla vs. Megalon. Childhood favorite. Yeah, drop kicking fools, and I, I love the design. As someone put it, the Godzilla vs. Megalon design looks like a puppy, and I love it. I love that. It's my favorite Godzilla design. Uh, Godzilla's Smog Monster was before this one. And that is one of my favorites. That's easily my top five. That's one I keep reminding myself to try to find on Blu-ray if I can. Because I love that one. I love how quirky and unique and interesting and different that film is. And it's so psychedelic and it's acid trip. And there's still images like this family riding a roller coaster and as it goes up there's like this over here like this image of Godzilla but it's like in shadow it's a very creepy weird but interesting shot I love that film and that film did not do well and people hated it because it was so different and unique that doesn't automatically make it good but I think in this instance it was good but they hated the director for it and they pretty much banished him you will never make movies with us again I think that was very unfair, and it was quite honestly bullshit. Because I think that's one of the best ones, in my opinion. But, we gotta go back to basics. So they did that with this. And to me, it was a lot, lot, lot less interesting. And it's weird, it's kind of fits in with two of my favorites. It's because Godzilla vs. Spob Monsters before it, Megalons after it, and those are in my top five. The plot, you have this cartoonist, 
and he's working with this guy who has this thing called Children's Land, which has like a Godzilla tower. One thing leads to another, and him and a group of people find out that these people running this place that just want happy times and peace are aliens. And if you watch the silhouette, they have a silhouette of a cockroach. And they want to control monsters, King Ghidorah, and this new one, Guy Dan, to destroy the Earth. And Godzilla and Endurus, the one walking on his hands and feet with the bit spiked back, they had to go. A good chunk of the film is Godzilla and Endurus dead to their destination. Just, yeah, a lot of these movies did not have a lot of Godzilla. And then people go, well, why do you complain there's not a lot of Godzilla in the newer ones? Because the newer ones have more budget. Like, they have, at this point, dozens and dozens and dozens of movies in the past to reflect on and learn from. And you think these movies had the budgets that you have, Hollywood? They have, you know, toothpicks and nickels and dimes and quarters to do a lot of these movies. That's why this film has a lot of stock footage, which is one of the detriments of the film. Now, Godzilla vs. Megalon has stock footage, but I don't think it's nearly as much as this one. And that one, I felt, had a lot more charm, a lot more fun. Jet Jaguar and the, the way certain scenes were set up, and I liked the battle more at the end. It felt faster, it felt more loose. I felt like Godzilla was kicking more ass. I did he drop kids fools. Like Godzilla vs. Megalon, I have a lot more fun with that. Um, that that one I have brought a big smile to my face. I would say the way Nate feels about Guy Dan is how I feel about the Megalon one. And like I won't say this is a rant because there's some yes, there is some entertainment to be had because I do like this era of Godzilla where he's fighting different foes and he's like the hero protector I would say it wasn't a boring movie I mean I would I like this more than Godzilla Raids Again the, the second one or it's definitely better than Godzilla's Revenge <laughs> I just say I love the design of Guy Dan I think that's the best part of the movie but then I can watch Guy Dan and the next one, Megalon. Plus, I also like the design of Megalon as well, so I like both designs. Here, I'm like, oh, King Ghidorah again. How do I put it? I was going, yeah, Guy Dan, I really liked his design. I like the red visor thing, looks like he's part of Devo. I like the buzzsaw stomach, the, the hook. For hands, for arms, I should say. The unique shriek it has. I thought that was very cool. Definitely to be one of the best villains. I understand why the makers of Godzilla Final Wars used Guy Dan as kind of the final bit. I thought that was the right choice. And th that film has its flaws, but I do quite like Godzilla Final Wars. That might be my top five Godzilla films. I don't know, I'd have to think about it for a while. It's been a while since I've seen those, because I, at one point did review them, but they were, they're long gone, Sally. I don't remember why. Uh, but yeah, Sally the Long Gone, and I haven't seen these films for a long time, so it's kind of nice to revisit even this one, even though I'm not really big on it. It was still fun to revisit. Cause it, it's not boring. The actors are not bad, like the guy who plays the cartoonist. They're not bad. The music is fun to listen to, but it's just music reused from the older Godzilla films. And like I said, the a lot of stock footage from was it from uh, Didor, Three Headed Monster, Destroy All Monsters, Monster Zero. I think even bits from War of the Gargantuas, at least some of the military scenes. There's a shot of Monster Island and the son of Godzilla. I don't know if that's from Son of Godzilla or if that's from Godzilla's Revenge. Like the amount of stock footage, I know the director was angry that he had to use stock footage. He didn't want to do that, but he was forced to. That does hurt the film quite a bit. That, that is one of the biggest detriments of the film. 
And also the battle felt slow. I don't know what it is. Like, you look at some of the other battles, like the next one, or even before, is Medellin. They felt more exciting. They felt more thrilling. Here, it's either Godzilla did his ass kit. He does bleed. Was one of the mem memorable bits of the film is that Godzilla actually does bleed. Gaiden comes and slashes his arm and it bleeds. That's probably again the thing people remember the most about this. Which I think they took that and they put that metal on, which I'm I guess I'm fine with because Oh, I wanna watch that bleed, I'll watch that. I think it's a metal on. I could be wrong. It's been a while since I've seen that film now. Like I said, it's been a long while. But it felt like everything was in slow motion. And like the story with the aliens. It kind of felt like just a redo of Monster Zero. And I'd rather watch Monster Zero. And it just... Man, there's a lot of Godzilla films that deals with humans versus aliens, but this just... It, yeah, they're going back to bases, but then they just felt like kind of old hat mixed in with stock footage, and it just made the film a lot less interesting to me. Like I said, the positives, like Gaiden, the design, the interesting... Uh, there's a bit where they talk. Godzilla and Andrus talk. And in the Japanese version, you see speech bubbles. And it sounds like people going, Wiki, wiki, wah, 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 wiki, wiki, you know. Wiki, dude, wiki, wiki. And then in the human, I mean in the... With the humans... No. I'm trying to remember the English dub if the humans, how they sounded. I can't remember. Because uh, I watched the Japanese version. I do remember in the English version that the when Godzilla and Andrews talk, instead of doing the speech bubbles, they have actual voice. Which sounds like, I don't know, a half-dead, half-drunk uncle. Grey, Andrews, come, we gotta go over there, you know. I don't know what the fuck the deal is with that. I would love to hear an explanation from the director or whoever on why the hell they did that. I guess people remember it. It's just so stupid. But yeah, yeah King Ghidorah, a lot of times when he attacks his footage from Ghidorah, Three-Headed Monster, among other movies. Uh, like I said, last stock footage, the, the battle just felt slow. There's a bit where Godzilla grabs Andrus and Andrus comes back with his spiked back to slam into King Ghidorah. I thought a lot more punishment could have been had onto Gaiden. I thought there's a lot more that Godzilla could have beaten up Gaiden and done this and that, but I felt like Gaiden got off a bit too easily. I felt like King Ghidorah got more punishment, which is weird because it's called Godzilla vs. Gaiden, so shouldn't Gaiden get more punishment? Just saying. Like, why is it King Ghidorah's doing more punishment than Gaiden when it's called Godzilla vs. Gaiden? And Ga Gaiden's the one that actually cut and hurt Godzilla. So then Godzilla should have beaten the ever-loving fuck out of Gaiden. I don't know, like, punch that visor thing, punch something out, or... Like, there's one bit that he hits Gaiden with his tail, tosses him down... They roll around, then it cuts away to Andrus getting his ass kicked, because most of the time he gets his ass kicked. I'm like, dude, you... Godzilla needs a better tag team partner. Because Andrus ain't cutting it. Bring Rodan, maybe he'd be a better tag team partner. And it cuts back to Godzilla, and then he's just bouncing on the guy, like he's ready to ride him on a Friday night. After being heavily drunk. Just st stomping on, like... I can't, it looked like he was riding him. Please. No artwork on that. So yeah, Godzilla vs. Gaiden. 
I said, it has its issues. From what I understand, the original idea was supposed to be three monsters versus another three monsters. And it was going to have, like, Varan with Godzilla, and then, like, Megalon was going to be introduced in this one first before the next movie. But again, budget constraints and cut downs got rid of that. I think if they let the director alone and they gave him the budget he needed, I think it could have been a better movie. Like, have that stuff incorporated into it. I mean, the characters... I, the actors weren't bad. I can't say I really gave a rat's ass about the characters, to be honest. The music is cool, but again, it's just reused music from the other movies. Um, and again, Godzilla vs. Gideon is one of those... For me, it's low on the totem pole. Like, of the 70s... It's my least favorite of the Godzilla films in the 70s. Even if you take 60s and 70s, it's low on the tone pole. It's better than Godzilla's Revenge, but not by much. Like This is one of those that I did. I saw one time before and never watched again and until now. And Unless I get another request to do a review or commentary or something, I probably won't ever watch again either. So, it, yeah. But why is it a rant? Because it is. It's still that 70s Godzilla. Like I said, I think there's movies that have more fun and more charm to them. But, you know, the old school model work and the old school Godzilla suits and the idea. There's still you know, a bit of that charm if you're Godzilla completionist you like this era and the at least the actors weren't bad at all and it didn't feel boring so it still has that 70s charmness to them I yeah I just felt there were other films that have more charm like Smog and like Megalon but that's just me but with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.